counseling, long-term relationship, or marriage, breakups are never easy, and moving on from a breakup even harder. So what are the biggest mistakes that people make when getting back into the dating scene? Joining us with a list is dating and empowerment coach Laurel House. Good morning. Hey, Welcome Laurel. Thank you. All right, let's get right to it. First up, you compare everyone to your ex. What's wrong with that? <laughs> well, whether your ex was good or bad, you don't want to use them as your checklist to compare to everyone else. Oftentimes, people memorialize the idea of their ex, not the reality of them. And that's a huge problem because what we're doing is basically stringing together moments that are really only moments, not the whole truth. And then we're using that to go up against everyone else who we date. And no one can compare to a caricature. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's very good. That's <laughs> yeah. I have a client who said, you know, my ex-husband was the love of my life, and he was so wonderful, and she even told men this on dates. Turned out, as we started talking, he was cheating on her, he drank too much, he never made her feel like a priority, and she was always competing for his affection. Well, obviously not that great, and it was a hard pill for her to swallow, but she had to admit it, accept it, own it, and then allow herself to have truly a clean slate moving forward, and I see this all the time. Another thing you say is you're on, when you, you know, you go through the breakup and now you go online and you set up your profile, but the profile says nothing about who you are. Right. So that probably isn't a good thing. No, I yeah. see so many profiles that are either basically blank, just, you know, a couple of bullet points, <laughs> which is not the point, or I see people who say, I don't want this, I don't want this, I don't want this, I do want this, this, this. Okay, well, who are you? The point of a profile is to show and tell what life living with you would look like. If you're a parent, talk about the fact that you're a parent. Don't go on and on and on about your kids, but mention it. Talk about your career. Talk about your life activities, your weekends, what drives you, what, what you're passionate about. This is the full breadth of who you are. You can brush on what you're looking for, but don't go on and on. That is what the other person should be but doing. But everything you just described, is that a, a lot of TMI right at the start? Absolutely not, okay. because part of the profile, yes, is attract the right people. You also want to turn off mm -hmm. the wrong people. You, this is not a free-for-all. Mm -hmm. We are trying to match with the right one, not with every one. You say date, sometimes you date heart first. Which isn't that, isn't that what you're supposed to, isn't that the point? <laughs> you should actually at the beginning date head first. So when you're dating heart first, it's all about the immediately gratifying feelings. When you're dating head first, it's about the facts. Are you someone who would realistically be a good partner for me in life? So for example, a heartfelt dater might go on this great date and they're like so excited and obsessed with them and feeling like, Am I in love with them? You're not in love. You're intoxicated on chemistry, which is a drug. And it's blinding you to the real red flags, the deal breakers, and the value and lifestyle differences that make you guys not work. Or you go on a first date and you're like, you know, they're really nice. They seem like a great fit, but I just wasn't feeling it. Mm -hmm. It being chemistry. There are so many great daters who have real enduring potential that are just discarded because could the chemistry come later there. yes okay chemistry so and more than that date. attraction yeah so uh -huh. don't you think first with your eyes well yeah you're gonna see first but then you do need to get your head in the game when you're dating head first you're looking at values lifestyle needs can you possibly satisfy my needs can i possibly satisfy yours then once you realize you know what this person actually could be a good fit then on the second or third date inject your heart and your hormones and allow yourself to have fun okay mistake number four date you date as if you're already in a relationship this is a big problem, especially with people who are out of long-term relationships or marriages. Because when we're in that type of a comfort zone, we start to create habits that support it, like a morning and a night, good morning, you know, or a phone call. Mm -hmm. You might start saying, I love you, even if you're not feeling like, I love you. It's just, I love you, just because that's what you say. You're reserving all of your nights for them and checking in before you go out with anyone else. These are things that you do in a relationship, not when you're dating. And it can be a huge turnoff to new daters because they feel like you're being one, one party's way ahead or, of the other. Exactly. Yeah. And not only can it be a turnoff for them, it can actually be hurtful for yourself. 
because once you activate these feelings inside right. of you, you have this knowing, you have this false sense of comfort, and if they're not reciprocating, then you become very needy, you're always living in fear, and you're waiting for the other shoe to drop, and that's gonna do more damage to you long term, because now you feel not good enough. Mm -hmm. Uh, mistake number five, you wait too long to get back into the dating world. So, depending on how long you've been, uh, you were with them, you really should get back into the dating world within a year because it's too easy to become scared, to become jaded, to build up your walls. You, no one wants to be hurt again. No one wants to get back out there and start fresh again, especially if you've been in something for a long time. It's intimidating. Online and app dating, it's very different. But if you take too long, it can become even harder, even scarier, and even more intimidating. You've got to just get out there. And if you need help, then you know, hire a dating coach. Go to events. Start just having conversations with people. But get your, give yourself permission to go out and start talking to people again and feel sexy and feel wanted. Okay, more information on dating yes. and empowerment. Coach Laurel House, you can go to laurelhouse.com. You can follow her on social media as well. Thanks, Laurel. Thank you. Thanks, Laurel. Good to see you.